Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome to Rock Bottom Podcast with Ray DeVito, uh, formerly known as uh, another podcast, uh, the G Hole. It's a kind of Rock Bottom Podcast with Ray DeVito. How are you guys? Welcome. Um, we got a great one, man. I got uh, the great Aliyah Janine, a very funny comedian, um, also a former adult film star. We get into a lot of it, man. Uh, some, yeah, this is, a, this is a fun one. This is a good one. Um, yeah, we did this at her apartment in New York City a couple of weeks ago, um, right after Roe versus Wade. And she's letting you know, ladies, there's still options. It's like when weed was, uh, when weed was considered illegal, you can still, uh, you can still get decent weed. So it's not the end of the line, although it is crazy that, um, yeah, then anyone's trying to um, make abortions illegal in the United States. That is, but so we get into that. Uh, good times, man. Um, join the Patreon, patreon.com backslash Ray DeVito. Check it out. I just put up one. My uncle Wiki passed away and uh, a bunch of family drama, a bunch of stuff that he told me that, yeah, just listen to the Patreon. Just listen to the Patreon. That's all I got to say. Um, patreon.com backslash Ray DeVito. Yeah, it's a very... Um, yeah, a lot of people have already reached out to me, uh, different things I, I, I should look into different things I should do. Um, so yeah, that, that's all on the Patreon, all that drama, but yeah, uh, Leah Janine, she's great. We have an awesome time, man. This is uh fun. I like it going back to New York city and doing more and more in person and, uh, yeah, Silk city hot sauce. Check them out. This is ghost whisper, which, uh, I like how like. A lot of people have it and they're like uh, the full bottle. So if you're watching this on video, this one's like half empty because I use it. That's how much I, I like Silk City hot sauce. And I'm getting a hot sauce from them. So go to SilkCityHotSauce.com, um, put in G-Hole and uh, save 15% on everything. And I'm getting a, a hot sauce, which I'm looking forward to. It's going to be really spicy because I like really hot hot sauces. So uh, also looking at the footage from my special. It's, it's really looking good. Jeremy Demery is doing a great job with that. And yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty sweet. I mean, it's, yeah, it, it came out really nice. So thank you all, all of you that were at that, at the, at the shows. And mainly I'm going to use the first show recording, but then I'm going to bring in a lot of stuff from the second show. Um, yeah, but it, it, it came out great. Like, I mean, I'm listening to it and it's, it, it's really cool. It's, it's really sweet. It's really cool. And uh, all right. All right. We'll get into this with uh, Leah uh, at and thank you, Helium Podcast Network. Um, if you're listening to this on there, uh, reach out to me on social media at Ray DeVito and everything. Uh, let me know where you heard this on Helium Podcast Network. I still have no idea where they put this podcast or whatever. But um, yeah, what do I got coming up? I'll be in New York City at the end of the month. I'll be at the Funny Bone. August 5th, 6th with Big J Okerson. Um, what, where else will I be? Um, yeah, check out my website, raydevito.net for, for all that stuff. All right. I love all you guys. Enjoy this. Uh, check out Aaliyah Janine online at the Aaliyah Janine. She's fantastic. This is a great episode. You're going to enjoy it. All right. I love you guys. Peace. I'm, I'm going to get into it. What's going on? Hanging out with uh, my good friend, comedian, Aaliyah Janine. What's up, Aaliyah? Hi, we're in my apartment. Yeah, we are. This is what, uh, yeah, people know we're not in my apartment. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> I had to suck a lot of dicks to get here, right? Oh, Jesus. Thank you. That's what's holding me back? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, it's really the way to the world, to be honest. I know whores know all of the world's secrets. You know, you really... Would, would you, now, how, how do you feel about that term? Is that like a... Whore? yeah. It doesn't All right. bother I, me. Well, I like, okay, so this thing with words, right? right. I, I have a great bit about how Gen Z, they get offended by certain words such as retarded and gay. And I think that's really retarded and gay. Yeah, to get upset about, about that. Yeah, yeah, it's all about context, and you, right. you know, and tone of voice. I've had people, you know, anytime a man like angrily, because it's always a man, you know, angrily calls me a whore, that says more about him and, right. and his insecurities and, and him not being able to get his dick sucked or even get it up than it does anything about me. Yeah, I'm a whore. Yeah, I've had sex for money. That's 
you know, the word for it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like for me, like I do a joke um, where some people have got a pen, where I do a joke where someone called me that uh, I look like Ben Affleck if Ben Affleck had Down syndrome, which, <laughs> which is, but I'm just repeating what someone said on a, a comment about me. And some people are like, oh, you shouldn't even, t-. it's like, I'm, that's something that was said to me. About me. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, uh, how, who are you to tell me what I'm allowed to talk about, about me? Mm-hmm. You, you know, and it's not it's like, but when people get mad about something like that, I'm like, I'm like, you know what? Don't, don't even watch my comment. Cause this is not going to be not that I'm offensive or anything, but like, uh, now I admit, like, I mean, you use the R word. I don't like saying, I don't, but I mean, that you're retard. Anyone, yeah. Say it. It's free. No, nah, I don't. Uh, retard. Mentally challenged, I'll say. But. Oh, well, no, there's a difference between yeah. someone who is mentally challenged, has a mental disability, yeah. and someone acting like a fucking retard. All right, all right. I hear what you're saying. My buddy, Bob Levy, who I love, Bob, he uses that word all the time. Like, if people can use it, it's fine. I don't. Uh, now, I'll tell you, the only word that I would take out if someone said it um, is I know uh, Gino getting in trouble for the N word. Yeah, yeah. And, like, and that's, <laughs> yeah. Well, no. Well, yeah, because we're Gino white. Gino Visconti, by the way. Well, I uh, think everyone uh, knows. We all know. Who Gino yeah, is. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I have, I have a joke that goes along with that one where, um, I say basically that, um, I'm old enough to where I used to be able to say the N word. I can't say that anymore, you know, and it is, it's a joke, but it's also a reality. A lot of white people right. have said the N word and a lot of people didn't, even, I grew up thinking it was just a swear word, like fuck or ass, you know, right, just right, a word right. I wasn't allowed to say. It wasn't until I moved to the fucking suburbs all white people where I learned what it fucking meant, but it was the nineties. So I still fucking said it obviously, but now no, I don't say it like saying that you never said it. You're a fucking liar, but something also must've changed. Uh, like when we were kids or something, I mean, Cause like Elvis Costello says it in a song, a bunch of people have said it it in a song. song. Yeah. So yeah, I, I get that. Like the word and also like, like I, authors have written, you know, Mark yeah. Twain. There's a lot of Quinn and Tarantino. Yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of people say Quinn likes the book Samuel L. Jackson just so he could get away with saying the N word or like yeah. writing it out. It's like Jesus Christ. It is a part of our culture. Yeah. Like you're literally trying to erase history, and you know, yeah. it just you can't get rid of words. It's what is that double speaker or whatever? Well, you know, it's what I what I will say. Like, I'm from Cleveland and they changed their name from the Indians to the Guardians, which I mean, it, it is what it is. But I what, think that's weird. Like, cause it, I, it is. Yeah. Weird. yeah. But when I was uh, I was I was doing the Looney Bins in Oklahoma, Tulsa mm-hmm. and Oklahoma City, it's a lot of Native Americans. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't even know that like, they got like their own language. Like one of the girls that worked there, it's like Cherokee. And she was talking. Yeah, about, each like, tribe has their own. Yeah, most of like them have, have their, their own language. I, I didn't even know that. Their until, own entire different cultures. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal. But I didn't know they had their own language. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're like they have their own languages. I, that's the first time I learned that. And and they were saying to me, like the guy that uh, is like doesn't like that they got rid of Cleveland. And first, I I don't. It's still a baseball team. Like they're whatever. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter to me. But he's like, yeah, you're kind of erasing our existence even more. Yeah. So, so, like so they got rid of the yeah. Indians and then what do they have? They have the but, guardians and what are guardians? White men. Yeah. But like, <laughs> he's like, why don't they get rid of the Boston Celtics? Then? Why is there or, or the car? Vikings? Or, I mean, yeah. the one thing like, um, the Redskins, because that is technically right. a derogatory term towards uh, Native Americans. Yeah, absolutely. That that would be like running around saying a baseball team is the n words. you know, it's, right, it's right. very similar to Native people. So that one completely understandable. Yeah, we have the Indians, we have the Vikings, we have, you know, Spartans or, or whatever that why can't they're yeah, uh, so it is like it in a that, positive. Yeah, yeah. I could see maybe because of the logo, but all of them like look at oh, yeah, Bernie Chief, Brewer. You yeah, know what I mean? The Chief Wahoo was. I mean, trust me, I went through my yeah, whole childhood. The Blackhawks. I went through my whole childhood wearing Chief Wahoo everything because that was my team. That was your team. Yeah. But like, 
yeah, but yeah, it did. Like the pointy nose and everything in the red face. It's like, all right, I see where that's. Uh, yeah. I see where that's like kind of cartoony. Like, uh, so that I understand. Mm-hmm. You know, like, even looking back, it's like, wow. That yeah, is. maybe just change. I but mean, it was the, the Blackhawks cool, yeah. logo was dope as fuck. You know, they yeah. have the cool Indian, you know, with yeah. the that's respectful. As long as it's respectful. I mean, but, yeah. but look at like the Vikings, you know, they have, you know, the white Viking dude and stuff. So why? Native Americans are a part of our culture. So you just erase something. (laughs) Well, I would say maybe change it if they would have changed it to the Cleveland natives. You get what I'm saying? That way you're still paying homage to Native Americans. You're fucking genius. I mean, you're too late, but. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, like if you would have just said the Cleveland natives, then that would have been like so. And then the natives, you know, they could have, you know, something kids, you know, if they like baseball or whatever, whatever. Everything's yeah. fucking falling apart, Ray. It, it is. Women no longer. <laughs> no a, more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's not even just about like having control over no more abortions over their bodies. It's yeah. also a privacy issue. Yeah. I mean, because it's like, OK, well, we have the right to privacy according to the Fourth Amendment. But now, like how are states going to know if, if we are pregnant, if we go to another state to get an abortion, you know, right. and like I don't have a fucking uterus anymore. So I'm like. Uh, <laughs> but it's still Are like you being serious or yeah, no, I had uterine cancer. I told oh, you that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. But I had uterine cancer. You guys. So they cleaned out my box a little bit and I shit you not a week after Ruth Bader Ginsburg died or whatever Ginsburg died. That is when I found out I had uterine cancer. Cause even my uterus was like, we're fucking out of here. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought that was, um, I thought that was a sweet, sweet. I thought that was hilarious. Well, I, what I think is going to happen is they're going to find a way to like sell Plan B, like you can, uh, on the. You, you can actually order. There's abortion pills that you can order online. You hear this lady say this again? And oh the, yeah, yeah, yeah. For my ninety um, percent of my podcast listeners are yeah, dudes, I'll, but for <laughs> but the dudes, you know this too. Yeah. If you have a mistake, listen. Yeah, you can. Um, you can still buy abortion ticket. Uh, abortion. <laughs> abortion abortion pills. tickets. The abortion so like, ticket. Like um, it's a lottery ticket. If you win, you oh, get a plan yeah, B. It's like, like, it's yeah, like the golden. That's ticket. what they gotta do. They gotta um, do it like lottery tickets. Uh, so you, Really want you gotta be in it to win it. <laughs> That's oh, who gets a uh, plan B. You gotta um, win it. In a lot no, of, the the, the pill. Off. It's the abortion pill. Um, yeah. they're ninety seven percent effective. I've taken, I've done the pill twice. Um, it sucks, but they work really, really well. But you could get them online. What you have to do is that um, you uh, have an you address. www.aliajanine.com. <laughs> no. <laughs> Get your free abortions here. I got cocaine. She sells them after her show. After I mean, college. honest. Well, you know, it, what, what's also crazy is that like some women, like they know they like I knew I didn't want to have kids around my 20s. I knew that I didn't okay. didn't want them. And I asked about like getting my tubes tied or something and they wouldn't do it like a man could get a bisectomy but if right, i right. but if i want to get they're like oh really that, that's a real thing a woman cannot get her tubes tied mm-hmm. but like you have to go through all of these fucking insane steps to even like try to get your tubes tied and because something like that can be reversible but it's like it's just insane like how much women still even before this and have control over their bodies that's insane so they're like oh just go on birth control pills like i i'm super hormonal i can't take like I can't take birth control pills. They they make me fucking insane. That that's right here. They like, yeah. turned me. I remember my ex. He's Mexican. When he puts hot sauce on everything, he put hot sauce on I a casserole. SilkCityHotSauce.com. <laughs> put it in G hole. Say fifteen percent on everything. SilkCityHotSauce.com. <laughs> and I yelled at him like he killed my mother. I was like, "What the fuck are you like? Just insanity. Antidepressants. I can't take those. So." I can't take those types of birth control pills. And I had an IUD and I still ended up getting knocked up with that. Like I was very, very fertile. Every time I've ever been pregnant, it was on some type of birth control, either the pill, um, condom, and an IUD. (laughs) You know what's never got me pregnant? The pullout method. You hear that? You have to be, I mean, that's on you guys. Pull out. I've never, never got knocked up on the pullout method. Why well, I never got a girl pregnant? It's one hundred percent effective. Baseball card collection, Star Wars toys. 
you will you'll never be a dad. <laughs> Can't be a dad until you grow. <laughs> But so, so where can they get it from? Just, uh, oh, oh, um, there is a process. I know there's a bunch of videos on TikTok, TikTok and Instagram, but, um, there's a couple of different websites where you could go. You have to set up like an address in a democratic state. They help you do that. Um, and then you have the shipping address or whatever, and they ship it to you. Um, there's also, there's different programs where um, a bunch of companies, Amazon, Google, they all said that they will pay for travel for women to go to oh, these other states. Happens. I bet that'll happen. So, so yeah. there was a huge list. Of, like if any of their employees ever need an abortion, they will pay for you to go to another wow. state to do it. There's different organizations that are willing to drive you. I mean, because all it, it didn't get rid of abortions. All it did was put it underground again. Like we're in the fucking right, yeah, stone yeah. age. We're going backwards. We're literally, they're keeping us fighting each other, repeating history while they literally fuck us in the ass. Yeah. Like, the, loop. like there was, I just found out like, um, up until recently you could, um, there are YouTube videos on how to do your own. And they just took them all down. So how to do what? How to perform an, uh, oh, how an, to perform abortion? an abortion. Yeah. <laughs> like those were I like, man doing that lady yeah yeah but like, uh, no they took them all down on youtube which yeah understandably they did the same thing with covid when covid first happened like, oh yeah like any covid yeah like any covid video Fucking, that's so, still yeah. a thing did you know that's still a thing i finally got yeah. it you got covid i finally yeah. got covid once it was when i went down to florida shocking yeah I, 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 I i've uh i don't think i've ever officially got um covid but like i was traveling international and when you get the test here mm -hmm. the rapid test it takes like 70 it takes like two hours or not even like an hour or so to get your re results or a little less than an hour. well yeah depending on like the whatever yeah the prc whatever crap but in the bahamas to come back like because mm -hmm. uh, you got to buy an insurance so if you if you do have it they give you 500 dollars a day to stay there uh so, like, it was hilarious. When I got it to come back to the States, they told me my results in, like, less than two minutes. Like, no, you're fine. They're like, just get out of here. Just get on the plane. Get out of oh here. Oh, my God. Yeah. So you could be have it. And they, like, just go. See, you know, I still you, had you my know. taste and smell. That Like, I still had that. And I was in Florida. It was fucking March. And the pollen, like, my allergies. Like, I've gotten sinus infections right, before right. when I lived in Florida, just because, especially during that time of year. And for the fact that I could still taste and smell, I was like, oh, it's not COVID. Right. It's probably just fucking allergies. And I took some allergy meds and it didn't fucking work. And I'm like, all right, but let me try a different allergy med. Try that. That didn't work. Um, let's say it was like the second to last night I was there. I woke up and just in a pile of snot. You know how some people drool? Yeah, yeah. Like it was literally just snot out of my, I was like, what the fuck? Fuck and I still my dumb ass. I'm like, well, I can still taste and smell, so it can't be uh, COVID. I've never had an allergy attack do that. Finally get home on like a Tuesday or whatever, and I pop open a ginger beer, classy lady, yeah. and uh couldn't taste it. I was like, oh fuck. And then I had like the little at home test, took it. I was like, God damn it, finally got me. Two years. Yeah, how, how, how sick were you? Were you uh, um well, I was really tired. I was super tired. Um, and like the nasally stuff, but like I only lost my uh, sense of taste and smell maybe for like a day and a half. It was barely anything because I'm super bad. Like I had all three vaccinations. Um, so yeah, I was just, I was super tired for about a month afterwards. I like all the sniffly stuff that stopped um, for about a week. I didn't cough at all. But I was really tired um, and like a lot of brain fog for about a month, month and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. Like all I wanted to do was sleep. Wow. I mean, sleep is great for, for your body COVID for two and a half years. <laughs> uh, that's I, called I, depression. I, I, think I, I, think that's, I still have COVID. Wow. <laughs> that's called depression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you tried micro dosing? No, what's what's micro? My, I, I know my, micro. That's weed stuff, right? No, micro. Okay, so I just assume it's weed. Uh, are, micro dosing with mushrooms. Oh yeah, it's mushroom stuff. They um that can really help. That helped me get out of like a solid three year depression. Oh, I was just. Yeah, I, I mean, I am who I am. 
it's uh, yeah, it's I, I get up and do I got anxiety, so like I have to run uh every every day. I have to do like cardio every day. Yeah, you work out. Yeah, working out that yeah. also helps me out tremendously. Yeah. Like, like I, being... I do feel better. I do feel like more light after I mm-hmm. like do uh yeah, because it releases stuff. happy chemicals. Uh, well, yeah, working out. Yeah, working out actually because it keeps you active. It literally like produces happy chemicals that make you want to do more stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you're more. Yeah, because when you're just sitting here doing nothing, your body is like, fuck, we're just going to shut down. Yeah, then. Exactly. When I like lay like lay down like in the afternoon, just like mm-hmm. screwing around on the Internet. Like, yeah, I don't want to get up. You, you know what I mean? You've been in, I'm sure mm-hmm. we've all done that. Everyone. You're yeah. just sitting there and you're like. Oh, this is like uh, I was gonna do this, but I'm let's just I'll watch another forty minutes of videos on YouTube videos for, on this. for for no reason. Yeah, like, I I'll spend hours, but that's because of the ADHD. I didn't realize that that was one of the things where sometimes I'll just be paralyzed where I want to do a bunch of stuff, but like I bus- like I just can't do it. There'll be days when I am so productive and super active and doing all of these things, and then there'll be one day where I'll just be like, I just need to sit here, I guess. And then I'll try to do like productive stuff, you know, on my phone instead of just playing games. Like I'll play, um, like I'm learning Spanish because I bought tickets to Lima, Peru for my oh, yeah? <laughs> relearning Spanish. I took fucking four years of it. I understand it more than I can speak it, but so, I, so I'm doing that Usted, or like Usted. 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 That's like the most polite thing you say in Spanish. Usted. Yeah. Usted. Um, that's um, you. That's the formal, the formal or usted is. They would always say that's what you say when you meet the president of mm-hmm. Spain. I don't even know if they have a. That's Hello. all. That's all I remember. Hello, mucho. You say Hola. Sacapuntas. Well, I know a lot of swear words. That's pencil sharpener. Sacapuntas. Sacapu- that I did not yeah, know. Sacapuntas. Lapis is pencil. Lapis. Lapis. La playa. Is... La playa is beach. Uh, La luz is light. Carbesta. Mm-hmm. Uh, Manos. <laughs> uh, yeah. Mi ex novio es mexicano. I heard Mexico at the end of that. Mexican at the end of that. And my ex boyfriend is Mexican. Oh, that's right. The hot sauce guy. Yeah, that, yeah. Right? What what are you doing of... relationship wise? What uh, how, how are you? What's going on? We don't we don't do that. We oh, you don't? don't do... Oh, that. no, 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 no. That's fine. Um, no, I'm actually um, I'm single. Uh, which is nice. I was dating someone, uh, for like a year and a half, on and off for two years. I guess that was kind of toxic before quarantine. Um. Did you live with them or no. no? God no, no. I can't live with people like. And how how'd you meet this person? Were they were, if they were in comedy? I don't want to. Yeah. yeah, we're not gonna. Yeah, oh, they, they were, were in comedy. comedy. Yeah. Oh, all right. all <laughs> no, right. it's okay. I talked about it a lot on my other podcast. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I never mentioned names or anything like that. Um, <laughs> like people know, but the, right, right. the general public, ha <laughs> ha. Um. And then um, I got into another really toxic relationship with a dude who already has a girlfriend of that was for about two years. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. And um, so done with what, that. When did you know they already had a girlfriend? In the very beginning. Oh, you knew at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, so you knew the whole time. Yeah. And you were still like. Well, it was supposed to be just like. One Is it one thing. of those where he's like always like, I'm going to dump her. But because I've known a lot no, of girls no, that have been no, in no. that. And I'm like, what are you doing? Because in my head, I'm like, that's going to be you eventually. Eventually, you're going to be the girl that he's telling another girl. Oh, I'm yeah. going to I'm going to dump her soon. No, I'm and that, like I've seen so many girls do that. Oh, and you're just, like, what are, well, what are that, you the doing? breadcrumbing or whatever. No, no. But that was Is that, never. Is that- is that what it's called? It's called breadcrumbing. Oh, uh, yeah. When guys just or when people just keep someone hanging on, you know, just like little bits of attention here and there. Yeah, it's called breadcrumbing to keep them. That's. Because you, you, I know you've known that where someone, and it could, it could maybe go the other way too, where someone's like dating someone that has a significant other, and they keep telling them like, ah, oh, don't worry, we're, I'm, I'm gonna end it. I just, I just gotta wait for this. She's got this coming yeah, up. Yeah, that, yeah, that's called breadcrumbing. It's called breadcrumbing. 
It's the name of this episode. Brett Crummy. <laughs> I didn't know this. This is yeah. a new. Uh, but no, 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 no. That, that it was never. I never. I still never wanted him to even break up like that. Was it? You didn't want a breadcrumb? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just got real disrespectful uh, for no reason, and that. Um, and I'm really petty and spiteful. Right. And I'm a people pleaser. So I will go above and beyond to make sure everyone else is OK. So if I have if you if someone pushes me to the point because I'm also have attachment issues. So no matter how toxic you are, I'm still going to keep you in my life because I don't know how to let it go. Oh, really? But, <laughs> but because I know that they're bad, what I've done the last couple of times is just do stuff to make them hate me so much that they don't want to come back because it's their family. So yeah. that's you. What, what's something you've done in the past to someone to make them leave? Um, well, one dude. Sorry, well, I did set his house on fire and well, he still came back. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you don't want to say specific, I'm you. like, well, no, no, <laughs> I, no, I'm just trying to like, like word it right. Cause, <laughs> cause I have a bit about it where like I got, um, because you have to get crazy. She's like, and that's how I got served my firstborn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nothing like that. But just like stupid childish stuff that will just drive someone crazy. Like one, like this guy, I just like, I got super mad about like Instagram. I'm like, you're not liking these, po-, you know, kind of thing. And I was like, this has to be it. And then I'm like, if you don't fucking do this, I'm going to tell your girlfriend. He's like, that's insane. And he's like, I don't want to fucking talk to you. You're dirty. And I'm like. Oh, right. so that's the dude that had the girlfriend. Yeah, so, yeah. Right, well, that's an easy one to throw at. Yeah, him. yeah. That well, two years. I'm like Jesus Christ. So that, um, so that one. And that then, is <clears throat> something you always have in your back pocket, where they know they can't really fuck you over because, like, listen, I can. <laughs> no, but it's in legitimate. At any blackmail. point. Blackmail. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, hey, they put themselves in that position. They did. No, well, they that's put the thing. Yeah. In that position. Yeah. It was like, how do you think this was going to end? Yeah. I'm like, if you were nice to me, everything would have been fine. But you turned in a total dick for no reason. Turns out he was a dick though before. Because well, he obviously, a, yes. A turns girlfriend. out he was already an asshole. Yes. But that's I always have a hanging. Type. Yeah, that's always hanging. Uh, yeah. But you always have an ace card to pull. I know. So you're always still going to be like, yeah, it's like, you know, what I have in my back, we, we know, we know what's in my back pocket. Yeah. And he didn't think that I was going to um, tell anybody. And I told somebody and I was like, fuck you. I told you like you when I tell you that I'm going to do something and then I do it, you can't be mad at me right, right, right. <laughs> or like because you literally told me fucking tell people. I'm like, OK, wow. Do you think like it's I'm so petty? <laughs> I wouldn't say like that's called like a, a trump card when you got something over someone. Else. Do you think with the way history's been going the last few years Fuck men. and everything going on with the, like there's going to be generations after us that mm-hmm. think like pulling the trump card where you get to be an asshole. No one can do anything about it. <laughs> They're going to think it's stemmed like he <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just seems like this is like. We got the origin story. Like, it was already called that before yeah. he even existed. Oh, God. And now he is the ultimate Trump fucking card. Trump card. Like It's life imitating art. Yeah, right? where it's like, you can just be an asshole above anything. And, like, generations later, it's like, oh, you're, it's called playing the Trump card. It's like, so th- that's weird. Did he have, like, a... A great great grandfather that was a huge douche. Where <laughs> probably, that, I mean, didn't we all have a great 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 uh, father that was probably a douche? Uh, it's like, well, that was my uncle. Uh, <laughs> I just don't know. No, my uncle just passed away. He's a great oh, great. I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. I got to, I got to see him. He was in hospice, and uh, I got to see him, and uh, I could see him while he was still lucid and still. How old was he? Uh, Eighty four, I believe. That's 84. a solid. Yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, my dad was his younger brother. Mm-hmm. So my dad died when he was 60 or late 50s. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so he already felt like, he, you know, like he's trying to console me about my dad dying young while he's on hospice. And I'm like, <laughs> I think, I think we could change the focus back to you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You're the one dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did, did he have anything or was he just old? I, 
I, I just know he had, I know he had a bad heart. I, I mean, I, there's no reason to go into the details. Like there's other stuff to talk about. Oh yeah. 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 When, uh, just old and dying. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was definitely good to see him. And he was like, you know, in good spirits. He was really happy to see him. See me. My uncle Wiki, everybody's uh RIP. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was, a, he was a great dude. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I saw him. And like, if I didn't know he was in hospice, I probably never would have saw him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I wouldn't have known. So I'm glad I got to see him. And then what was weird is I was thinking. When did I first did you see him pass or no? What's that? Did you see him die or no? No, dude. No, I was going to go back because I, I had to go on the road for a week. Yeah. And I said, oh, I'll see you next week when I come back. And then the, that day I got back, he lost all uh, the communications. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Like he couldn't communicate anymore. Like he was alive Pentonic or like just or yeah wh- 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 whatever that's called and then uh and then right. he, he passed away the uh, the next day nice but oh like, i mean <laughs> i didn't mean like <laughs> you're like and it took all right it, well uh, <laughs> no that's the thing is that like when people are like that because my my grandfather he was in hospice right. uh he yeah, two strokes. He was dying of stage four lung cancer. The motherfucker smoked like three packs of Marlboro's oh. a day. For- That's what my uncle did. My uncle's. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say, like, I remember him as a kid. He always had the shirt with two pockets on it. Yep. Or they roll it up. And then they have- oh. you ever, like the 50s? Well, he would have that? one pocket was for his glasses and the other pocket was for his cigarettes. Mm-hmm. So cigarettes they always glasses. had their cigarettes. Yeah. And watching him literally die in front of us, just barely taking breaths, you know, for days. It's just like, give them, let them go. It's inhumane and to allow people to do that, you know, to just be alive because it costs, people are making so much money off the dead, off of sick people. So they're making money every fucking minute that someone like that is still alive. And it's disgusting. (laughs) Yeah. There's the one cool thing about hospice though. Like my mom was in hospice is it does allow uh, you to see people. Oh, yeah, while you're yeah. Still like knowing this is going to be the last time. Like, well, yeah, you know. no, you should still totally have that. Like in states where they have the assistant suicide, yeah. they'll be like, yes, here's the day. You get to spend it with your family, you know, with your family. And then those that you want in the room as you take these drugs or whatever doctor gives them to you or something. And you go that way. Yeah, it's a respectful. You should be able to control how you go. Suicide should be legal. Uh, Just kidding. Then there's the uh, what do you call it? Then the old uh, Terry Schiavo thing. That was a lady that lost all verbal communications and they wouldn't unplug her. The family. Remember that? That, that was in the so, news. Yeah, it was that- in the news for like months. So sad like, when people do that. It's like she's gonna shit. snap out of it. And it's like eh, no, no one's ever snapped out of this. This is month two now yeah and they'll keep them some people will keep other people just their bodies just alive for years and that's just for them it's the same thing yeah. that people do with fucking animals where they'll a dog their dog will die and they'll go buy another dog that looks exactly like that, the same dog that they had right and it's just like yo you guys i thought i had attachment issues i can't wait till this bitch goes she's driving me nuts <laughs> cover her ears don't let her uh don't Lucy, let Lucy. I love you. the uh was it the Big Lebowski movie where the guys just the you, you know the Big Lebowski mm-hmm. where the guys like uh, Larry's dad the kid that like this is your homework isn't it isn't it Larry Larry the the kid that wouldn't speak to him but the dad was like in a ventilator he was like some movie director oh. from here but he was just like it was just sounds like a coffin. With uh, that air machine going in and out. Yeah, no, I vaguely remember. I haven't seen The Big Lebowski in years. Oh, it's one of the greatest movies. But it like, I've never movie. seen anyone on one of those body ventilators like that. But that's situa- isn't that for like polio or something like that, or um, like the decompression? Like it's a decompression chamber, right? Yeah, I've, I've never seen one before, and I didn't know that. If I never saw The Big Lebowski, I never would have known. That that's something that exists and that's got to be like <laughs> it's going to be an extreme thing oh yeah i think yeah because they i believe they use them for polio and, and like if you got the bends or something like that it's like the a, bends what, what exactly is i just know it is a very cool radiohead song uh, no the bends is like when um when you're way down in the ocean or whatever and you come up too fast like you don't give your body enough time 
to like get the oxygen back or something like that. And so you know, it's called getting the bend. Is that uh is that what they mean in that song? My baby's got the bend. I don't know. I, know. I don't know that. That's song. like it's <laughs> it's a great song. It's the most rocking radiohead song. Cause you know how like a lot of their stuff can be Radiohead's a very good band. I love Radiohead, but, big fan. Yeah. But I don't I think the name know. of the album would even be the Benz. The, My baby's yes. got the Benz. I know, but it's like the, I would have to hear one it. album where they rock out. Like, oh, maybe that's why I haven't listened to it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a really good album. Like, mm-hmm. I can run to that album. Most Radiohead, you can't run to, but that I, one I can like really. There are certain songs, Radiohead songs, that I'm like, I like this one. Yeah, a lot. Um, I used to be a certified nursing assistant. Uh, when I was a kid, well, well 18. when I was a kid, <laughs> 18, you're still a fucking child at 18. And, uh, we had, there was a person in a decompression chamber. Um, like I worked, I worked in the death wing, like everyone that uh, the death wing, uh, like the hospice part of the wing. Yeah. So is it depressing? No, no it didn't. You're like, you're like, yeah, it I didn't. Got- I don't know. Death. I mean, cause I grew up around a lot of like death never bothered me. Cause my mom was like, it's a part of life. Um, also I may be a little sociopathic, but yeah, it didn't bother me. And a lot of times when they died, I was the one who had to like prepare their body. So like the family, cause you know, oh, pay wow. their last respects or whatever. Um, yeah, I did that for maybe about a year before I got born. And then you went into porn. after that. <laughs> no, what did I do after that? Oh, I worked at a gas station, third shift, well, a truck stop, um, gullies. And then in the Milwaukee area. And then and then um and then dance. Oh, and then waitress a little bit, bartended a little bit, and then uh, I could see you being a cool bartender. I'm a phenomenal yeah, bartender. Yeah, I could see you being a cool bartender. Minus being able to count money back, especially when I've been drinking. <laughs> I'm always either it's for some reason it's always nine. I'm either nine dollars over or nine dollars under on my drawer. Like most it's always been nine around nine. It's so weird bar i've ever worked at it's insane yeah i could i could i could see you being a a, a cool bartender he, uh, he's gonna knock that uh can that's uh the uh but yeah i i could see like if i if i was if i was casting a movie i could see you very easily being like uh yeah. uh a bartender like the like the local dive the local dive bar yeah it has like, to be it has to be a dive bar i know how to make a lot of drinks i can make martinis i can make fucking margaritas but I mean the cool a dive bar like you yeah know, like, but you know. now like you basically have to be a fucking scientist and everyone's like dry ice with gin and i'm like you could go fuck yourself you're getting fucking whiskey and a pbr and you're gonna shut the fuck up you know what else people don't get like uh beers in new york let's say are like you can get a beer for like six bucks six seven bucks sometimes yeah. more like more yeah I mean, that's still expensive for a beer though yeah yeah but here's what people don't get the difference between a new york bar in Middle America bar is like I go to a Middle America bar or a, a, a New York bar, like in a story or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's like in New York, there's buybacks where a bartender will give you a shot or like mm-hmm. give you a beer, like when you're there, like that's just normal. There's not so much of that in Middle America. What? Yeah, yeah at least uh, like I'm talking about like the trendy bars where the, oh, the no. bars that will charge you six dollars a beer in Cleveland, Ohio, will like there's not really buybacks at that. And it's like, no, New York really gets away with doing it because they give you some, you know what I mean? Like they buy you around after you bought like three rounds for your I've friends. never, every bar I've ever been, unless it's like, well, no. Then again, you, you are a woman and women do get more that, like, like in New York also bars. Also fair. Also, that is also a factor in yeah. the, in this experiment. But yeah, I've never, yeah. Um, every bar that I've ever been to, it's like, yeah, you, you buy a couple beers, you buy a couple shots, bartender, buy you a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a, a kind of thing. thing. Yeah. But a lot of uh, like in middle America, a lot of they don't do that. Maybe because I also am traveling so they don't see me like I'm just in this town for this week. And it's my yeah, time. you're so, not a regular. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's also part of it. Also, maybe throw them a couple extra bucks. Yeah, I do that. Well, we were talking about this when uh, I was doing the podcast with Dave Temple, um, which I did. And I didn't know because I was listening to a podcast of his him and Derek Gaines, mm-hmm. and they were calling, uh, it's the way a black guy tips mm-hmm. where if you go to the bar, you just put your money on the table. Mm-hmm. So then this way, they like kind of take, so it's like, so in my, it's like, all right, 
first of all, this is all your money. Mm-hmm. If you are not cool to me, I can take some of that back. Where like you just let them know. Oh, that. Ahead of, and he's saying like that. They were saying that's how black guys said. And I go, I'm. A, I go. I do that. I didn't know other people actually do that. No, where where um where you leave your money on the bar yeah. and then when you're getting. I've done that's more I've never really done it here in the city, mostly because I don't really have to pay for drinks here. Uh, well, so okay. well, then again, we are in comedy. And yeah. Sadly, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of times um, I'll ask for a tab and it will be like three yeah. dollars. And then I tip them. I just give them <laughs> yeah, yeah. twenty dollars. But yeah, any bar, especially in Wisconsin or even in Florida, like if. If, if we're sitting there, we just leave the money if paying cash. We just leave the money on the bar. Bartender takes yeah. uh, whatever for whatever drinks we're buying. And then at the end of the night, we either give them the whole pile or, or we take some of it. Yeah. If they charge you for every little thing. Uh-huh. Oh, you use a napkin. That's a dollar. Like if they do that, then it's like, guess what? Yeah. I'm I'm also going to be picking up. Yeah. I haven't you been to a me- bar like that to see like uh, you need like that blonde lady, you know, with the short hair who's who's tanned way too much so, well i mean now they can't smoke cigarettes there's always that lady she always has her money on the bar maybe the shot glass upside down and then you turn it up for when she's ready for a shot yeah yeah i also love how they do that that uh that's another new york move that you don't do that's they... not a new york that's totally that's i think oh that's, really i think that's um that's just bar etiquette in general yeah where they like give you a shot glass mm-hmm. that's where we're saying i got your next one Inserted, yeah i would say it you know what I'm going to start doing? I'm I mean, start... Ohio's way fucked up. Wisconsin's cool. We already know all this yeah. stuff. Um, you know what I think I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start bringing empty shot glasses to bars and just put them on my pile of money. You could bring your own cup. Did you know that? Because you could travel, like you could walk around bars with your own, with, with alcohol in the city ah, now. That's true. And this woman, she asked, I think it was like a Moscow mule. And she's like, oh, can you make it in this cup? It's like, yeah. Well, What's a Moscow mule? See, I don't. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. He, uh, yeah, it has, it has, um, Bacardi in it and the lime stuff. But maybe there's... something Russian, obviously. Are we gonna get rid of all Russian things? Uh, why? They're attacking, uh, the Ukraine. They, they were, oh, oh, they're still doing that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, assholes, Jesus. Yeah, they're still uh, so I, I don't know what's happening. And why are they because they want the they, they just want, want the land, I guess. I don't know the whole uh, but, is it, well because he's a sociopath That's and no, why. and no one's uh, and then uh, also, which is also weird, is um, there's some people in Russia that have no idea what's actually going, going on. on, yeah, no. Yeah. You're not allowed to be gay in Russia. They really, really don't like gay people in Russia. Um, well, isn't that everywhere? <laughs> Thank God. Thank God. No, I'm kidding. Happy Pride, everybody. It is still Pride. Happy Pride. Happy Pride. Oh, but they're probably going to go after that next. Gay marriage. Clarence Thomas. I don't know if that's true. If um, if he did write something where they need to go after or look after those, too. It's like they got those fucking assholes in there and they're literally just it's it's like you let a bunch of fucking children who don't know what they're doing into into a house and they're just fucking tearing shit up. They're like fuck it. We we still talking about gay pride? Everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the Supreme Court. The Supreme oh, Court. Oh. They're like a bunch of children that don't know what the fuck they're doing and they're just going in acting like they know what they're we're like, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this, and let's see what happens with this. Fuck it. Yeah, yeah. No, that was. Uh, we need to stop paying taxes. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, well, I think we have to pay. No, the, no. The government, everything, businesses are corrupt. Everything's, uh, everything's. That's escaped. what I'm yeah, saying. All, I don't know. That. I if don't know. We have stop answers. paying because technically we're supposed to be in charge of them, right? The government's supposed to work for us. The government hasn't worked for us for quite some time. They and just fight with each other. Our government just fights with. Well, other. they made us. You're not wearing the same color shirt I am, so I. Yeah, hate you. Like, yeah. So, I wear so this they, shirt. they divided us. They make us. The people yeah. hate each other, so we're not paying attention to what they're doing. Yeah. We need to what stop if that's paying what their them. Whole scam is. That's what literally if, what the whole scam is. Right? If, where have you been? Yeah, the whole rights. Like they have a deal. The Democrats and Republicans are. Here's the deal. We're just going to pretend like we hate your guts. You act like you hate our guts. 
we'll just fight and they won't see us fucking them over and everything else. Yeah, that's literally and that's what, what they're, they're doing. doing. But they're on the same page the whole time, Aaliyah. Yeah. Duh. Son of a bitch. You're welcome. All right. So we need to stop paying them because they're not doing their jobs correctly. We need to all storm. I don't think storm the cat. Actually, that's pretty much the only way is <laughs> violence or stop paying the money. Like, pick a what day. if we storm the Capitol and it's just them blowing each other? It's just Democrats and Republicans having one big, like, that's literally what they on do. Our I thought, dime. No. It's one big party on our dime. They're all in here, like, yeah, poor Joe. He doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's falling off of bicycles. He doesn't know what he's. Uh, He's nine million years old. He should not be running a country yeah. in 2022. Someone said the price of gasoline in Canada is like uh, eight dollars uh, a gallon or something. It's like, is that also Biden's fault? Is it Biden, also- <laughs> the president literally has nothing to do with gas prices. That's the gas companies. You fucking morons. Like yeah. the president. Of all things, like the president really doesn't have control over a lot of things. I love it. Like anytime something's too expensive, you get to blame the president. My cable bill is what? Fuck Biden. God this damn it. This is my tennis shoes cost. How much? Fucking Biden. <laughs> Jesus Christ. My bar tabs. How much? Fucking Biden. That's definitely Biden. Jesus ball. Biden. Yeah. Watch him get rid of watch him try to like get prohibition back or something like that, too. Fucking Biden. They're going to get rid of legal weed. Whatever. No, it's it's, it's only going to get worse. Buckle up, because every democracy has always failed or crumbled around 250 years. And we're at what? 246. We're yeah, almost- we got four more years, four more years, four more years. What? <laughs> Now, I hear you're getting ready to do an album. Tell me about this. Tell oh, God. That. No, I wasn't telling anybody about oh. that. Yet. Oh, not yet. No. Oh, it's OK. Um, in January, I'm um, looking into it because I wanted to do one uh, before quarantine, as some of you may know uh, who listens to Ray's now, podcast. Quarantine happened. Yeah, I am. Well, I'm a retired porn star, so it's going to be all of the porn stuff um, that I had planned out. But now. I fucking hate it. And I don't want to do it, <laughs> but I need to do it. Cause that's like how I start comedy and stuff. So I want, yeah, my first album, um, it's going to be uh, those jokes. Have you, um, I, I would just say like, I don't want to know if I want to hear, do you have a, a porn story where like that you realize like, and I don't want a bad one where something horrible happened, but one where you're like, all right, I got to <laughs> I got to transition out of this. Oh, like a bad, like a bad day at work kind of. Yeah, thing. but not so much where some traumatic happened where like it ends with <laughs> the day ends with uh, all people crying or something. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. I don't want like. Uh, no, I want one. Have you met me? No, nothing um, bad has ever um, happened to me like physically. Where you know, yeah. um, I terrify people most of the time, apparently. Um, no, there was, uh, was one of the, I guess it was one of the first, it was one of the first couple of scenes that I did and you learn, you know, unfortunately, like depending on the agency you have or the friends that, that you make in the industry, um, kind of learn as you go. And I've always been the kind of learn a- as you go. I've been a loner that way. And sometimes that sucks. Um, but I had, I had an agent at the time. Uh, his name is Jim Sow, uh, RIP was great agent. Um, one of the first like very well-known agents and he hooked me up, you know, booked me this shoot. And, um, it was this director guy. I forgot, um, Fabian or something. I can't remember his we'll name. Call him we'll call him Fabian. We'll call him Fabian. Um, he was a director, had male talent. Uh, he it was supposed to be just a regular boy girl scene. So, so that's just a male and a female fucking in some type of storyline. Right. Um, but he was trying to like film more scenes, like different scenes and also trying to get me, he's like, Oh, he's like, let's do double penetration. So he had a dildo. And while this guy was already inside me, he literally tried to stick another dildo in me. And I grabbed his fucking hand (laughs) and I was like, Whoa, one, absolutely fucking not. Dude, that's like that's another whole genre. That's more payments, you know, right, more right, right. dicks, uh, more money, kind of thing, you know. So it's this whole thing, and for the fact, yeah, 
there are some dudes, there are some like sleazy, um, and, and these people don't really work for like the bigger company. You, you know what I mean? These are more like clips for sale guys, you know, low level, um, type scenes. You find that out as well. They're like, Oh, he has this website. And it's like, Oh, this is, it doesn't do anything for my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some random dude who had some extra money. And now he gets his dick sucked by fucking porn stars. Um, so, you, you know, you stop doing those types of scenes um, pretty fast. But yeah, that dude, I, I've had, um, I remember another director I went, it's called um, a go see. And they have them in mainstream acting too. It's like where you go see the director here for porn. Like you literally have to get naked, you know, so that they can take pictures, see your body and shit. Um, this dude <laughs> was trying to act like a pimp. And because like I've had a pimp before, so I know how pimps I've had yeah, right. two pimps before, literally for like a day or two, just um because I'm crazy. And um and he like he like he was totally like trying to do like this thing where like degrade me, like make me feel you know, degrade it like like it's a whole conditioning, you know, think whatever. Um that's is that it. what a pimp is supposed to do? Or well, no, 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 no. Well, well, it's called mm-hmm. nagging and be like, Oh, you could do this, but then you know, this is wrong with you, and be like, but I can help you with that, you know. That they're trying to get you to work with them. Right, right, right. Um, it's so funny how they do it. Too. Um, but yeah, so so he was trying to like that whole game, and I'm like, I thought you were a fucking director. <laughs> um, and I thought that was funny. I forgot what he had said. He had said something. He's like, oh, he's, he's like, I can make you hood rich, you know, where you have, you know, a couple hundred bucks in your pocket every day. Um, Because basically he was trying to get me to do private, which is escorting, um, hooking or whatever. But he wanted me to only charge like um, three to five hundred dollars. And at that time, my rate was like two thousand dollars an hour. And I was like, (laughs) I just started laughing hysterically. And um, I was like, yeah, no, that ain't going to work, baby. Yeah. So there was some um, I mean, I got scammed, you know, out of some shit before that happened. Yeah, that. Speaking of which, and I mean no disrespect to this guy, uh, is I'll tell you the guy's name, uh, Jay Frank or whatever. He like does stuff at I guess Broadway Comedy Club. Him and Sharon Simon like had to do these web videos. So, anyways, I knew nothing about the guy, but I used to do videos for uh, guy MTV's Guy Code. Like, okay. uh, Ryan, Ryan McKee like ho- hooked me up with that mm-hmm. or whatever. And then when Guy Code didn't exist. I was like, oh, and like, oh, and I was like, oh, I know a guy who's hiring for some web video. I didn't know who the guy was, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I just talked to him on the phone. I didn't know like he was part of Broadway and everything. And then when I saw something like this, well, I talked to him. He's like, yeah, so you do you know, whatever, whatever sketches you got, you know, give them up, put them up. I was like, all right, what's your pay? He's like, well, uh, no, there's no, there's no pay. I got to put it. I was like, no, that's not. I, what, what, I just give you free content. content? Yeah, I just give you like, like, no, I was doing this and I was getting paid for this. Yeah. So now I'm, I'm like, I can put up my own shit for free. Yeah. But like, I was just like, what is like, and in his defense, like he didn't realize how weird. It's yeah. Happening. Like how weird, like, no, nah, I'm like, listen, dude. And I, I was trying to explain, like, listen, you can't talk to legit comics. Like, like if you want to be taken serious, like, no, you get paid. Like MTV pays you, uh, Asylum.com pays you. Uh, yeah, like if these you... revenue, Adam TV, when Comedy Central, they, no, they pay you. Like they don't just. Why I can just throw this shit on YouTube? Why? Yeah. Why am I going through? I have more subscribers than you. Yeah, are. that's the thing. Like, Unless thing, like, like you have I... all of these subscribers and you're like, you know, yeah. literally promoting other. Yeah, it's that, like, that's why am I just thing. giving you this? That <laughs> happens so, so much because it happened in porn a lot too. Yeah. Um, so much or a lot. Well, I, I don't know about you, but like I wanted to keep talking because I wanted to hear how like, like his train yeah, of yeah, thought. Yeah, just how, he's like, like, no, we're <laughs> gonna make a collaborative thing. Basically, he's trying yeah. to create a cult. But that there was this dude, his name is Oliver, and it was from like the native society. He's like, Oh, I would like to interview you, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then like put up content, do all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, does this pay anything or, or you know, what well, you just assume it's paying. Like, okay, or or, or I'm, I'm like, what am I going to get out of this? Because I have more followers than you. I have more webs. Like yeah, I yeah, yeah. would be helping you out. Most of these comics are literally bringing you traffic. Yeah, You're yeah, not yeah. helping them. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't like that. I called him out for that. 
And I'm just like, because I've had to deal with this shit before. I'm like, if I have more followers than you, I'm doing you a favor. So you need yeah, to yeah, either yeah. compensate me or do something. He's like, that's not what I'm doing, blah, blah, blah. It's funny uh, because a couple of weeks ago, I actually saw something in the website. It's gone. His website's gone. The name was just, yeah. all those interviews that everyone's like, oh, I'm on, you know, they're all promoting it. And I'm like, stop doing that. But some people, they're just like, oh, my name is out there. They're like the algorithm. I'm like, it does nothing. Yeah, he, yeah. If you have more followers than him, you are literally helping them. They are yeah, not yeah. helping you. Yeah, that, that, that's why. I didn't, and now, like now, because. Uh, yeah, like uh, talking to like some of these. Uh, well, I, I don't want because not, nothing's finalized. So I don't want to talk about what I was just talk about, like what I was telling you about earlier before we mm -hmm. said a little inside baseball. Yeah. But like different like agents that I talk to, mm -hmm. like some of them have like some of them know the game and they're telling me, well, all right, well, this is when this happens this is what and they do the breakdown and stuff. But then some of these agents that I talk to. Um, are they like, no, we just take 20%. Like, or what, what do you, what, what, what do you work? Like what, uh, like, what do you actually do? Yeah, like what? And they're like, they didn't give me specifics. Like, no, I know a little bit of the specifics. I'm in a little bit. I'll talk to you about, I, I don't know why I went into this, mm -hmm. but, uh, I, I don't want to say anything because I haven't signed anything. So oh, I don't want, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I had but agents in porn. About, they're very yeah. similar agents in porn. Um, it was but, only like, but some of them minutes. like. It's like they're talking the baseball game that I already know a little bit. It's like, all right. And yeah. then other ones, like, you're not saying any, like, I'm like, right, why am I still on the phone with you? Like, I'm just <laughs> like, I know more than you. Yeah. It's like, you're supposed to like, you're not helping me with anything. Mm -hmm. What am I just going to be a face on your website? This is, yeah, this like, is nothing. It's like, I am. Um, yeah. And then you just sit there. I had, I remember my first agent in port gold star modeling. And, and like, cause I didn't really know anything about contracts. You know what I mean? I signed this contract and like, I wasn't allowed to like work unless they booked it for me. And I didn't realize, um, it wasn't until I met my buddy, uh, Mike, he's a lawyer, porn law is his name on, on Twitter. Mikey he, porn law. I like uh, that'd be great. <laughs> Mikey porn law. Um, Italian guy, I love him. And he told me, he's like, yeah, if they don't, um, if they don't book you within the first three months of the contract being signed, it's null and void. So I, like, I did a little bit of like work in Florida, like a lot of, um, uh, like clips for sale, um, type sites, a lot of like weird fetish shit. Cause Florida's got some weird shit. And, uh, I went, like I performed underneath like different names. Like I didn't perform underneath my name. Cause I, I didn't know that I could totally fuck do it basically you look right right learning as i went that's for sure yeah that's um but yeah it's weird i talk to some people and they're like it's like I, I, it sounds like you don't really do this like how do i know more about this yeah th than you like so yeah. like this is what i need from you because i would like um a manager just to help me book stuff because i've tried booking stuff myself and i always will get like some weird creepy email out of every five it's like, oh, well, we dragged off to, you know, kind of thing or just something where I was like, I can't deal with that. It does help. Or maybe like make another email and act like a good dude or something. I book myself well, I, I, I have heard that where some women have done that, mm -hmm. where they'll like uh, pretend like they have like this dude manager and like it'll be the dude, like this dude they created. Like, hey. Like I've been them. told to do that. Do you have any idea yeah. how fucked on that? <laughs> no, but 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 I'm that. saying like because <laughs> yeah, I guess I mean I don't know because I'm not a woman, but I guess like yeah, some do some guys could be more weird to women mm -hmm. than they'll be like no one's gonna yeah email me back like listen sweetie pie yeah yeah <laughs> that kind like, of stuff i don't even like it like, when my fans call me babe or baby i'm like i don't fucking know you i'm yeah, like yeah. that's a boundary no that's creepy stop it yeah like no book it's like listen sweetie pie we're we got nothing available in august but <laughs> you know and stuff like that is fine if you have a rapport with yeah, someone yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. If you have a fun, flirty report with someone, yes. But it's when, like, when you're just meeting someone, like, especially online where it's not even, you haven't even met in person. No, it's called having boundaries. Wait until you get to know that person a little bit, you know, yeah. before you start with that fucking bullshit. I mean, because I fucking, I technically, I sexually harass people constantly. <laughs> 
cutie pie. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm disgusting. I, I did that all day yesterday for pride. Like uh, I was just hanging out with Goots on his, it was a beautiful uh, night last night to like just hanging uh, on his stoop, like having a couple beers. And everyone that walked by, I'm like, happy pride. No matter who they were, happy pride. And that's how you find out some people at home are like, I'm not gay. Like every once in a while you get to, it's like, just it's like, pride. we don't care, yeah. dude. It's just like, I'm not gay either. I'm just saying, and even the walk by, like, happy pride. Like anyone who does happy that pride. wants a dick in his mouth just a little bit. <laughs> thought about it just a little yeah. bit. It's all, sexuality is a spectrum, man. Yeah. And I can't wait to get back on it <laughs> right on that spectrum. All right, I'm going to get ready to wrap up here. Right? All right. Well, well, plug your stuff, Aaliyah. Let people know where they can find you. Uh, butt plug. No, uh, <laughs> Again, plan B. Go plan, to Aaliyah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you can look that stuff up online. Uh, I have my hardcore comedy show at The Stand. It's every second Saturday of the month. Next one coming up is July 9th. 11.59 p.m. July 9th. Um, we have Lisa Ann as um, as a special guest. We're going to play like a fun game Q&A yeah. kind of thing. So Lisa Ann will be there. Um, you can use code HARDCORE for uh, $10 off of your ticket at the standnyc.com. I think it's our website. Uh, follow me on social media, the Aaliyah Janine on Twitter, Aaliyah.Janine on Instagram, Aaliyah Janine on Facebook, and check out my schedule aliajanine.com can't get yeah you cannot that was a joke there's no you can get t-shirts that say i love cream pies though yes who doesn't like a cream pie t-shirt which may not sell very well right now (laughs) this climate but uh for me i ain't got a uterus so fill her up (laughs) all right well thanks for doing this peace everybody